Hi there, it's Colette, and in today's episode, I chat with John Immel from Joyful Belly on eating disorders, body image, and body dysmorphia. And John also shares his personal experience with eating disorders. And also, stay tuned to the end, because John offers a really generous scholarship to his upcoming Masters in Ayurvedic Digestion and Nutrition course. So stay tuned to the end for all those details. And now, let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to Elements of Ayurveda, Empowering Wisdom of Life. I'm your host, Colette, and in this podcast, I hope to empower you to take charge of your own health by sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. We will also discuss topics like health and wellness, nutrition, yoga, fitness, meditation, breath work, and much more, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature to Mother Nature, and to each other. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the show, and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend you listen to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Just one more thing before we start the show, I want to remind you of my upcoming Ayurveda and yoga retreat, which is happening on the French Riviera. It's in a village called Villefranche sur Mer, which is nestled between Nice, which has the international airport, and Monaco. So it's right on the Côte d'Azur, this really special village, where for three days we're going to meet October 11th to the 13th, and we're going to do Ayurvedic talks and workshops and yoga and meditation and breath work. Have lots Lots of fun and of course enjoy the area as well. So if you're interested, please click on the link in the show notes or just visit my website elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash retreat and I hope to see you here in person in October. Okay, now let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to Elements of Ayurveda. This is Colette and I'm very happy to welcome back John Immel from Joyful Belly who has been a regular guest on the podcast and very happy to have you back today, John. How are you? Um, I'm great and uh, I'm glad to be back. Yes, it's great. It's great to have a conversation. I know people really enjoy you as a guest. And today we wanted to discuss the very serious topic of the eating disorders and body image. And I know, John, this is something on the Joyful Belly website that you have covered quite a lot. And I noticed the amount of articles you had on your site about eating disorders. And this is why I wanted to chat with you about this today, because I think it's something in our society people deal with a lot. And while it's a very serious series of psychological condition, right, that um, Ayurveda can certainly help. So can you tell us why Joyful Belly has really focused on eating disorders on your site? Yeah, well, the first thing that that I'd like to mention about it is how fitting Ayurveda is for people who have eating disorders. And, Mm. and, um, and that's, and that's why we spent uh, so much time and effort on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Because uh, people who have eating disorders, they fundamentally believe in food, right? Yes. Like people, even an anorexic believes that they are going to succeed in life uh, by eating perfectly, right? Right, exactly. And uh, and so uh, people who have anorexia or other eating disorders, um, they're really focused on food. Mm-hmm. And, and well, they have a smorgasbord of, of diet options, right? Why Ayurveda among all of those uh, is is because Ayurveda I think is very unique as a uh, as a as a diet. It's very unique because it's it's not fighting the body in any way. Exactly. So it's a safe object of you know if food is the is the um, if food is medicine is the desire of the um, of the anorexic uh, then the 
then Ayurveda is a really safe outlet for it because it's so body affirming. It's so natural mm -hmm. that uh, an anorexic gets to, in a way, be perfectionist about food in a, um, in a non-harmful way in a way that's not harmful. And so, right. uh, and so I just think Ayurveda is, is a great um, way for uh, 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 an anorexic to turn their anorexia right on their head. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and just up front, I want to say that we are aware that these are, you know, serious conditions. And of course, you, yeah. you know, you would want to see a trained specialist in eating disorder, okay. any concerns like this, but Ayurveda can really be a great support vehicle during this time and help the digestive system. Yeah, absolutely. I always, uh, anorexia has a really high fatality rate. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and it, and it is very serious. Uh, and so, I, uh, I always recommend to all of my clients that they are seeing some mental health therapist. Uh, uh, and it's really important that when they're choosing a counselor um, or therapist that they select someone who has specific experience in eating disorder, not somebody who's just a general practitioner because uh, really uh, it's a whole eating disorders in a way it's a whole world and you need someone in that world to really understand it. Yes, yes, I agree. Absolutely. And this is a topic I've wanted to cover for a long time, but I wanted to get somebody who had a real understanding about it. And so when I saw it on the site, I was I really wanted to have this conversation. So let's talk about in general, what is an eating disorder? Yeah, well, uh, fundamentally, or at least the way um, the way I think of eating disorders mm. uh, is is a person who is trying to mastermind their diet with their head on some level. Right, like right. They're, they've rejected their body's natural impulse around food mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they are uh, overriding that. Now that is, I, I know that definition is um, really focused on anorexia. I think bulimia is a really, looks very different mm -hmm. from anorexia in terms of what's happening. Um, uh, you know, underneath. And so I think we have to look at the other end of the spectrum, which is where people have an uncontrollable impulse to eat from their body that they can't, that they can't seem to, uh, control at all. And so there's these two spe uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, the person who can't control their impulse and the person who controls it too much. And, yeah. uh, and Ayurveda, I think, um, says that, uh, just the opposite of that is paying attention to true hunger, that there's mm -hmm. that our body has these natural mechanisms uh, to tell us about our appetite. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is is be in touch with those and have really good discernment uh, around our, our appetites you know, and, and, and use Ayurveda to understand our appetite. And yeah. that is the way out of the of the confusion from an Ayurvedic point of view. Yes, absolutely. And that's something I deal with a lot with clients, particularly when we're doing cleanses, getting clients to connect with that feeling of true hunger, and many mm -hmm. of which don't understand that, what you mean true hunger. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we confuse thirst with hunger because thirst is like our weakest sense. So sometimes it may just be thirst yeah. and, and yeah. rather than hunger, or it may just be emotional eating and yeah. you know, using using food to suppress emotions. So I do think that's really important to get in touch with your true sense of hunger. So how would you define true hunger or how would you say to somebody, well, this is the signs of true hunger? Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah. So th um, we have to talk about uh, the, yeah, the different sensations that we associate with hunger. Mm -hmm. And we can start with the stomach. Uh, so sometimes an empty stomach, uh, it could be a sign of hunger, but sometimes it's not, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, a real hunger is, uh, or I would define real hunger as your body actually needing food and all of the ways that it communicates that uh, to you. Mm -hmm. But there are times when your body communicates hunger-like feelings or you misinterpret feelings as hunger uh, when they're when they're really not. And you you mentioned a perfect one already is that mistaking thirst for food hunger. Mm. Uh, but so you know it's uh, 
this is a big topic, true hunger, but let me go over some of the highlights. So an empty stomach. If your stomach is empty, you can feel that. Mm -hmm. And there is a actual uh, nerves and things in your stomach that are that are measuring how much your stomach is stretched. And when your stomach's empty, it's not stretched anymore. And then your body reports hunger. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means you actually need more food. But for a person uh, who has eaten very heavily um, for breakfast, they may not actually need to eat that much for lunch, even if their stomach is, is, is empty. So, so that can't be used as a as a sensation on its own, right. uh, you have to look a little bit deeper. And so I say that really on, on, um, at the deepest level, true hunger is something you feel in your bones. It comes associated with a feeling of lightness in your body, mm -hmm. a freshness in the mind. I notice that my forehead feels really cool if I haven't eaten in a while and I am, uh, and my blood sugar level um, has uh, is starting to, to drop. Mm. Uh, and, you know, if you could say, oh, well, I'm, I'm hypoglycemic because, you know, my blood sugar levels are a little unstable. But uh, if you um, but if a person who doesn't really need to eat, they can be even hypoglycemic, but not have that feeling of lightness. You know, they might have the headaches or, um, you know, the discomfort associated with hypoglycemia, but they don't have that lightness that comes. And so I, th I think there's. Uh, that sensation of lightness and a slight coolness and a cooling down of the body, a, uh, it could be a little bit energizing to mm -hmm. be uh, hungry. And, and I think, and I, and I don't want to like, um, you know, let the cat out of the bag here, but I think that's something that anorexics really want is that feeling of being energized by hunger. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to wait, get myself you know, way down a bit, but we can talk about that a, a little bit more. These feelings of true hunger. I'm just going to say one more thing about it. Cause I've had mm -hmm. lots of clients come to me with pain in their stomach that they associated that they thought was true hunger. And once I pointed out to them that no, your stomach is just in pain right now, this okay. has nothing to do with hunger. Mm -hmm. It was like a total healing for them. And specifically with overweight clients, I've had mm -hmm. overweight clients with uh, duodenal ulcers or stomach mm -hmm. ulcers, and they just kept eating to, to, uh, to make the pain go away. And, uh, and once we had just a, a, a real, a 10 minute conversation about it, they, it was like a whole new world for them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. And I do think that true hunger is different for each dosha type. Yeah. Would you say it? Like, I know from my pitta, kapha, but my agni is certainly pitta and it comes on fast and sharp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas I would say vata could be a, um, a variable hunger. Yeah, well, uh, vatas are so cold mm -hmm. that... Uh, that their appetite is easily ruined, you know, a, a, a sip of cold water and they've lost their appetite. Right. And, right. Uh, and so they've got to, they've got to, I think Vata in the end has to be the most careful mm -hmm. with recognizing true hunger because they can easily miss it or ruin their Agni. That's true. Uh, I, yeah. I used to have a yeah. friend who used to, when, when, when they cooked, they would totally lose their hunger after cooking a whole yep. meal. <laughs> and then yep. just totally lose it. So completely vata in that regard. Yes. Well, that happens to me too, but it's because I eat the food while I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's another issue altogether. And then um, for cough, of course, the the appetite will be more sluggish. And my experience with clients is that for a cough, it has to tune into that the most. And that would be something I would highlight for anyone with a cough imbalance or dominant cough dosha is to really tune into those real signs of hunger. Well, kapha has this whole, the kapha has this really interesting paradox around appetite uh, that, um, you know, always fascinates me. Uh, kapha people tend to be, uh, uh, tend to really like, uh, really like food and, and, and in a way almost be like in their mouth. My, mm -hmm. I have two, Two of my kids, I have four kids, and my second child and my youngest, um, John, little John Jr., they both really enjoy putting things in their mouth. And they're a little bit more kapha than my other two kids. Oh. And, um, and so they just enjoy 
in a way they enjoy food um, a lot. And so here's what happens to kaffas when when kaffa people lose their appetite, they often get alarmed because they 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 feel like they can't enjoy food anymore, and they. Mm-hmm. It seems that as if they go on this sort of food hunt when when that happens, uh, right. searching for that perfect um, perfect bite, you know, perfect taste. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of uh, kafa people um, actually eat because they're not hungry. And uh, and really, for those individuals, what all they have to do is just be a little patient. Like if they want the enjoyment of food to return, uh, they just need to wait a little bit. Uh, maybe right. even. Uh, skip two meals or have a very light two meals. I don't mm-hmm. usually advocate skipping a meal entirely, but a very light meal or two. And that wonderful joy of eating is going to come back to them mm-hmm. uh, after that time. Uh, so they don't need to to go on the hunt for it. <laughs> right, exactly. And a lot of times there will be the uh, kafa sometimes will have the, the emotional eating. So there's that constant yeah. grazing to suppress yeah. any emotions that may be arising or, and so on. Yeah, yeah, feeling overwhelmed, and this is this is where that we've touched a little bit of on anorexics, how they're just mm. constantly craving the energy of hunger. Mm. Well, on kafa people, they're they're constantly wanting to suppress overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Kafa people, when a sh- uh, emotions start to well up, it gets their heart rate uh, up a little bit, and that starts to circulate all their fluids. And kafa people tend to have a lot of fluids, and it immediately puts them into the state of discomfort that mm-hmm. vat and pitta people don't experience. You know, it's very easy for me to face uh, a painful issue, mm-hmm. and I'm just, I'm just like a, like a, like a true pit. I'm just rip, rip, rare and a go, <laughs> and and jump right into the the turmoil, right? Yeah, yeah. But for a kafa person, that is extremely uncomfortable for them and creates feelings of overwhelm. They almost feel like the rug has been pulled out from under their feet. Right, and, and they don't um, like they change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, and so kafa people, and uh, and then therefore. I, I think this ha- ties a lot into, um, you know, one type of, bul- of bulimia, uh, a kind of kapha bulimia where uh, where a person a person's uncontrollable impulse to eat is is very much tied to suppressing feelings of overwhelm. Mm. And uh, and that's really where they need to do some soul searching in that area. Mm. And so could we call that disorder um, more like the binge eating disorder? Yeah, it's a little more like binge eating disorder. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, okay. it can happen. Anorexics can uh, can be bulimic too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm I'm really referring to the binge eating. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, it's interesting to see how the different dosha types may. I mean, of course, we can't be rigid about this and and put everything yeah. everyone aside. But how they may have a tendency towards one type of eating disorder versus another. So if cough well, was more of a tendency towards the binge eating, which makes sense with um, mm-hmm. the the qualities of cough and wanting to sort of suppress and storing emotions and t- kind of tending, like you said, to avoid overwhelm. I mean, I've seen a lot of coughs go the. Uh anorexic route too, not the mm-hmm. binge route. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I mentioned earlier, uh, Colette, that my wife, mm. uh, she suffered from anorexia and was hospitalized for it. Um, oh my uh, uh, five, six years before, uh, we got married, mm. we were married and, um, and she's more of that kapha type and okay. she has that, that in a way that kapha sluggishness, she calls it kapha sluggishness. I call it like wonderful, nurturing, know, you know, right? sweet, sweet person that I've been waiting for my entire life. The Mother but, Earth kind of energy, yeah. Yeah, but this is exactly it. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's like kapha in rebellion. You know, when a kapha mm-hmm. person wholly rejects their kapha and, um, and then, you know, uh, and, and in her case, like if you were to, to if we were, if she was on the call and maybe uh, and maybe actually that would be a great idea to have her on the call sometime because I think she's yeah. just speaks so excellently about this um, mm-hmm. is that she experiences feeling sluggish and feeling tired. And also she rejects that feeling, mm-hmm. you know, as a Vata person for myself, when I feel tired, I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I get to like rest, relax. This is going to be great. You know, I've been waiting for this, you know, I'm usually like, so, uh, you know, so like, uh, motivated yes. that when I get that sense of relaxation, I'm totally grateful for it. But when she gets it, it feels, um, it feels like it's, it's like a, uh, the, the sum cause or the, 
the core of every failure in her life, right? Or like oh. th everything that w that has gone wrong is is due to this tired sluggishness. And you know, and it's not true. It's a story, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but so many anorexics have that rejection of a feeling of heaviness or a feeling of tiredness, and they look at these unfettered, free, um, carefree, lighthearted vata people uh, as as like um, almost like this super people or super and they just they just want to be like that so much uh, that they can wholly reject or, or be in rebellion against um, how they're made their wonderfulness um, and that I've seen that uh, over and over again this kind of you know kapha prakruti or kapha constitution that mm -hmm. looks like a vata mm -hmm. after having um, really tried to suppress their inner nature for a really long time. Very and let's not make the mistake to think this is just about food. This is a total lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. You see it in their exercise patterns, you know, mm -hmm. the one hour, two hours of exercise per day. Yep. Um, you see it in the, you know, drinking coffee in order to suppress appetite mm -hmm. because, uh, because if, you know, coffee simultaneously gives energy and, um, and makes the cough a person no longer really need to eat. Right. Uh, so we see that it's just this, it's a total, total pattern fixating on, um, on these very restrictive diets like raw food or vegan, uh, diets. And, uh, and so you see it, it's a real across the board, uh, way of life for them. And if, mm -hmm. and if an anorexic person heals their relationship with food, but doesn't deal with the whole lifestyle that's around it, yeah. um, they're not out of the woods yet. They're not fully healed. This is a, a whole, um, way of life that needs to be uh, challenged and discussed and talked about. And they shouldn't really stop their therapy until they've gone beyond food into these other areas. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so if anorexia would be more of a, of a vata imbalance or aggravation. Yeah. Well, uh, even uh, bulimia and anorexia uh, both end up causing a severe uh, vata imbalance. I mean, that's right. the result. The result of an eating disorder, if it's bulimia, it, it's everything from erosion of the teeth due to mm -hmm. acids um, all the way to um, the erosion of the esophagus and mm -hmm. um, and other uh, digestive issues in the stomach, electro strong electrolyte imbalances. Mm -hmm. and, and with anorexia, also atrophic gastritis, um, you know, an erosion of the of the uh, digestive enzyme producing cells of the stomach, mm -hmm. and also twisted colon. And this, my my wife actually got a twisted colon, which can be life threatening. Oh my goodness! Uh, she actually didn't have any damage from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but she was hospitalized also for twisted colon uh, because when the colon is totally empty and the and um and a person has anorexia uh, chronically, they're really increased their chances of twisted colon. So there ends up being this strong digestive uh, disorders associated with it. And that's, and that is, that's why, um, you know, as part of our uh, Mastering Ayurveda Digestion Nutrition course, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a, a, you know, we're really, uh, it's really important, I think, to, that we discuss eating disorders in that course. And we do discuss it in that course uh, for that reason, so that every one of our students really understands how Ayurveda can help in that area. Oh, absolutely. And it's such a huge topic. And I think for everybody, um, before I go on to that, I just want to mention, well, you're talking about bulimia there. So there's a lot of itis, there's a lot of inflammation. So then there is also a pitta side to that. There is a pitta aggravation yes. going on there with all the acidity yeah. coming through. Okay. But I agree with you. I think it's so important for us to discuss this because eating disorders are psychological, but having the supportive lifestyle factors in place, because otherwise it can be so easily steered back to that um, control aspect of of eating disorder. Yeah, Ayurveda shows safely shows people how to trust their body, right? Mm, how to yes. like how to take impulses that are happening underneath and sort them out, not not suppress them, not repress them, not ignore them, mm. but understand them on uh, on a fuller, deeper, richer level, mm -hmm. so that. We can uh, we can see that every one of our bodily impulses is a call uh, to uh, to health, right? right? Not a not a disease to be that that we should fight, right? Our impulses are not diseases we should fight. Our impulses are 
calls uh, for help, calls mm-hmm. for help. And, um, and so our body is, uh, and here's the thing, right? And here's the catch. And this is why so many people think they can't trust their body is because our, our body is not a, it's not a perfect tool, right? So mm-hmm. our impulses, um, you know, our first knee jerk impulse, um, may not, our, our, our impulse to eat three bowls of ice cream or something, for example, mm-hmm. it, that may, the object of desire is not always correct, right? Like our body's uh, desires uh, are, they don't, they don't always pick the right way to satisfy them, right? We know people who medicate with alcohol, but mm-hmm. they, but they do need to medicate, right? But they're yes. just, the, the choice to use alcohol to medicate is, 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 is what's incorrect, right? Mm-hmm. And so, if you are a kind of person who doesn't trust your body and, and you feel that impulse to, you know, binge eat or eat, eat something that, that, that you think you shouldn't, I, uh, Ayurveda's response to that isn't, oh, I wish that impulse would go away. It's let's go into that impulse and see what it's really saying. What can we learn about it? Mm-hmm. Uh, even what are the gunas of it? For people who know that word, the gunas, the qualities. Is this a craving for heat, a craving for uh, cold? Is it a craving for heaviness, a craving for lightness? You know, all those basic ways that we as Ayurveda practitioners um, assess uh, our feelings, mm-hmm. we're going to use that to um, to discern what our body really wants, you know, and, and, and once we find what it really wants, what it really needs, we can safely satisfy it. And, uh, and that's why I, I, I say that Ayurveda is a safe um, tool for a person with an eating disorder uh, to try to figure out how to um, you know, uh, re- to relearn a good, a healthy relationship with food. Absolutely. And yes, I couldn't agree more that Ayurveda's as well, holistic approach is so important in this because mm-hmm. it's dealing with every aspect of a person, mind, body, and soul, and also empowers people, which I love and educates the person and to have that curiosity about what's going on. And uh, that tapping into what it, what need am I not fulfilling or what am I suppressing or what's going on? Why am I trying to control this, this eating so much um, yeah. that it, it, it creates more of a curiosity around it and trying to get to that initial belief system. Yeah. Where did it stem from? Um, yeah, which I think is fascinating. So yeah. I would love to talk about now the, you know, the Ayurvedic treatments or in, in general, obviously, mm-hmm. around these different conditions. And, you know, say, for example, if we have somebody with, let's start with bulimia this time, and they mm-hmm. have now um, aggravated vata because they're going against the natural energy of the food going down, and now the food is coming up, right? So that's going to create mm-hmm. vata aggravation. And, and, and also pitta is aggravated mm-hmm. because there's a lot of inflammation there. So what would Ayurveda recommend in this situation? Would you agree that bulimia is more a vata and pitta aggravation? Yeah, yeah, I do think that. Uh, well, I think pitta is involved in, uh, in all eating disorders mm-hmm. where a person uh, is controlling yeah. them, their, their diet, right? Because pitta yeah. has that kind of uh, mind over matter yes. approach. To, and pitta thinks it can solve the world with the mm-hmm. head, but... But there's more to it than that. There's right. nature. There's our nature and our mm-hmm. and our and our body and our physicality, mm-hmm. which deserves a voice, right? A yeah. a truly smart person knows how to listen to every, every, every knows how to listen to everybody in the room and mm-hmm. take everyone's in feel, it, it takes everyone into account. And the same thing with our own body was we have to take the body as well as the mind and the heart, you know, the the gut, mind, heart all into account in order to come up with a true holistic decision. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so Pitta is involved, um, mm-hmm. in, in that, and Pitta is also part of the effect too. You had asked, uh, about bulimia. Uh, we're talking about, yeah, bulimia. Yeah. So if it is a Vata Pitta aggravation, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. what would the suggestions well, so be in general? Bulimia, the first start that, you know, to start with bulimia, we have to really look at the two types. Is this an anorexic person who's throwing up something that, you know, or is this a person who's binge eating mm. and throwing up? I mean, mm-hmm. there, there, uh, you really have to look at. I, I look at those as two, um, as two different, very different, two different types. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. And so, if it's uh, if it's the binge eating type, the first step I think uh, for a, bu- a bulimic person is to journal when they feel that compulsive eating. Just sit oh, down and write down that feeling and explore it. 
mm-hmm. and be willing to get into the discomfort of it, right? To experience mm-hmm. discomfort. I think that is, uh, that is, um, that's going to be important for them to get to get to know themselves so yes. that it's not an automatic behavior, yes, right? That's, that's the issue here. Yes. We're, we're trying to carry time between impulse and response, right? Mm-hmm. Like just open the gap kind of thing, you yes, know? Yes. Um, and, uh, and once, uh, once a person, uh, can, can sit with it just to, for a minute and then analyze their cravings or analyze the emotions or see, is this really just stress, et cetera, mm-hmm. that's going to be their best preventative, uh, measure, uh, for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, another way to increase that gap or to create, to create an intervention, um, is to have something bitter right? Mm. That like a bitter tea. This is um, sort of the opposite of what the kapha tongue wants, right? If the kapha tongue is looking for the perfect bite or the Mm -hmm. perfect fix, bitterness in a way sort of wipes the slate clean again. I said earlier how a kapha person may eat uh, because because they're not hungry, right? Yes. And uh, and so what, uh, what a kapha person can do is sort of check in with themselves by introducing bitter taste mm-hmm. early uh, before they eat or even uh, at the beginning of a meal because it kind of helps reset them a little bit. Yes. And, uh, and, and so for a bulimic person, they may not want to sit around and make a whole tea or whatever. They should just have a little, um, a little uh, bit of bitter herb in their pocketbook or something, and they can just take a little pinch and put that uh, on the tongue. This, the, the next thing that I would do is, and again, this is not for anorexic, right? This is the opposite for anorexic. Anorexic people should not be starting off their meal with bitters. No. Um, and, and the next tip for a person who's binge eating, if they have that uncontrollable compulsion, is uh, a, a, a little walk, a brief walk mm-hmm. or something to get their heart rate up. Because mm-hmm. so often compulsive eating comes from real sluggish metabolism yeah. and just getting a getting their heart rate up a little bit uh refreshing the system maybe even taking a hot bath uh mm-hmm. but that's hard to do if you're having a compulsion because it takes a lot of time right. but it doesn't take a lot of time to do 10 jumping jacks or something right, right just to exactly. get the old ticker moving a little bit you yes. know yes um, absolutely. that can really help uh a cough a person kind of move through the overwhelm, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, and, and I want to mention that overwhelm, the word itself, whelm is, uh, is a German word that means wave and Kafa people feel overwhelmed because they're uh, like under a wave, right? right? A wave of fluids and just mm-hmm. moving their circulation kind of gets things, uh, flushed out again, which is ultimately, uh, very supportive, uh, for, um, uh, for a kafa person. Yeah, and I could so, see that and, and changing their perspective. Yeah. 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 yeah and changing yeah. their perspective. Mm-hmm. Now, all of those examples were preventative measures. And you kind of asked about treatment, which is a more like post effect, right? Right. And so I, I, I don't want to leave that, uh, that stone unturned. I think that uh, where um, a person who has suffered from uh, digestive issues because of past bulimia or past anorexia, they need to rebuild their agni by mm. starting with foods that are easy to digest and foods that won't further irritate uh, their stomach. My my wife, um, uh, getting back to a personal example here, mm. is that when I met her uh, early on, I noticed that whenever we sat down to have a meal together, uh, after the meal, she would uh, feel, um, I noticed that she would have uh, a lot of anxiety and mm. um and we had a long talk about it and we finally isolated it, you know, uh, down to a, a, a dull pain in the stomach. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and so we made the assumption, you know, we shouldn't say diagnosis, right? right. Uh, because, because you need a doctor, a medical doctor for a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. But, but we kind of had an inkling, you might say, that there, that there was uh, some uh, gastritis, or maybe even a low-grade uh, uh, stomach ulcer that mm-hmm. she was experiencing, and so uh, we spent a few weeks on a very easy-to-digest diet, and that's something you can find on the Joyful Belly website if you go to our ingredient or recipe section um, and go into the search recipe box there on the mm-hmm. upper left. See that there's um, 
that there is a uh, section in, in, uh, for easy to digest foods. And you can see the whole list right. of easy and difficult. Right. And once you're eating those easy to digest foods, your stomach can heal. And then we supplemented that with some classic anti-inflammatory and supportive uh, type herbs and foods. Anything from, you know, marshmallow root, which is soothing, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, some mild, very mild bitters uh, that were anti-inflammatory. And after a few weeks, uh, she, sh she had dramatic improvement of that. I also had to get her to stop eating apples and oranges, which are both really acidic, yes, right? Yes. The vinegars, apples, tomatoes, mm. oranges, those high acid, acid foods are going to irritate. Um, they, they're fine if you don't have inflammation in your gut. But if you right. do have inflammation in your gut, it's very irritating and, and causes the problem. So she mm -hmm. had a, a, you know, a really big improvement after a few weeks from that. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and then we went on to step two and step three and step four. I mean, right. the, you know, this is, like I said, this is a whole world view mm -hmm. uh, around the eating disorder. And so it's something that for the rest of her life and for anyone who's having an eating disorder, they're going to constantly be uncovering new uh, ways in which that manifests in their in their life. Absolutely. Yes. And th those are great tips there. And I agree. I think you need support. You need professional help around this. And particularly each person is individual and you'll need an individual treatment for that. Um, but I do think just starting with easy digestible foods, let's just give the digestive system a break, calm things down and start with that, laying a good foundation there. And from there, you can start from a stable place, looking at them or the psychologically what's going on, what's triggering it and so on. But you need to calm the digestive system first, I think, which is a great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And one area which we haven't touched on at all is body dysmorphia. Yes. The yeah. seeing of oneself as different from oneself actually looks. And, uh, and that, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, I, I just remember a conversation that I had with my wife early on where, she, you know, she, she was asking me, you know, if I, you know, will, will you still love me if I gain weight or, you know, mm -hmm. these kinds of questions. Right. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and, um, and my, my, you know, my answer to that is always just look around at the, at the people in our lives who have, you know, stable lives, stable families and all, they all have, you know, they tend to have a little bit of coffee. I mean, this is Ayurveda mm -hmm. 101, right? Yeah, yeah. That kapha is very stable. Mm -hmm. And so while the media projects an image of success as being very thin and, mm. um, you know, and uh, this sort of very professional, career-minded, uh, sharp individual, when I look in my personal community, what I see is people who are sweet, affectionate, a, a little bit more stable. Mm. Um, uh, those are the ones who are succeeding in uh, in my in, in my personal community, I see so many examples of that. And of course, Vata and Pitta people um, have their uh, are, are successful too. But the but Vata people have to really watch out for their in, uh, inherent instability, and yeah. and Pitta people have to watch out for their sharpness. Yeah. And so, Kapha people shouldn't have this utopian view of energy. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have an utopian view of sharpness. Yes. Um, and they shouldn't have a utopian view of, of, uh, of lightness, um, that, and, and I just will challenge any person who is rejecting their kapha to take an inventory, like actually write mm -hmm. down the names of all the people they know in their community and, and whether, uh, and who's, you know, who actually is, um, you know, has those like stable, good, you know, uh, bond bonded relationships and, mm -hmm. and, and who doesn't and, and, and challenge their, their view of, um, you know, the, uh, of the, the failed body type that they feel like they have. Yeah, it's so true. We just have to look beyond the images that are fed to us by the media. And I think that coffers should definitely look towards their coffiness as a, as a, a positive, as long as it's not aggravated, of course. But um, yeah, definitely, I agree with you. Yeah, it's people that are... a lot of Pitta people crave. I mean, I'm yeah. about a Pitta person and I chose her, uh, you know, b because of who she is, mm -hmm. so, you know, who she is and... Uh, uh, on every level, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, it's deeply, 
um, rewarding uh, as a Vada Pitta person to have her and her and what she brings to uh, to our relationship um, mm-hmm. is is so wonderful. And and I think that you know that that those Kafa individuals should never doubt uh, what you know those gifts that that, that they have. Yeah, but it is unfortunate in our society, we are very image focused and it comes through in the media and the movies and so on. It's a lot of image and what you look like and the, the certain size and so on. Um, but yeah, and that's where we all need to do our own journey of our own self discovery journey. And I think that's where Ayurveda comes into play when we understand our inherent mind body type. And that we will never be that other type, you know, and that yeah. and and to understand our pluses and our positives and understand our, our tendencies mm-hmm. of, of weakness or aggravation. And um, I think that's where Ayurveda really empowers us to be, OK, this is this is my mind body type. This is my constitution and this is what I'm going to work with and and use my, you know, my strengths mm-hmm. to my advantage and also just be aware of, of my tendencies of aggravation. Yeah, and kava people lose their glow if they try to be vata. Yeah. You know, there, there's like, there is this kind of like, um, you know, uh, uh, glowing uh, kapha. You know, their their skin is get, is yeah. so beautiful. They're probably the most beautiful of all of the doshas in terms of skin. You know, they just have such a natural, uh, great complexion, and uh, and there's just there's so much about um, about the kapha body type itself that 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 is very that is very attractive and they'll lose all of those things that are uh that are attractive if they try to um be something that they're not you know it's not yeah. a step forward in uh for them and any on, on any level to to go against their nature so true and i think if you have a high kapha constitution the aging is very well what i've noticed yeah. is that you have a tendency toward not getting the wrinkles that the other doshas yeah. would get and that yeah. you age very very well Mm-hmm. Another yep, bonus kaffas. <laughs> so there you yeah. go. Um, yeah. And now I'd love to talk about. So we talked about the kind of the binge eating and supporting kaffa through that. And now I'd love to talk about more of the um, if it was anorexia with a vata aggravation and how mm-hmm. we support that. So we have a tendency, of course, towards the low body weight, depletion, maybe the loss of the menstrual cycle, weakness. I haven't seen, to be honest, I haven't seen many vata. Prakruti people become anorexic. I see, uh, you know, it, I'm, I, I, I'm, sh- you know, I'm sure that it, uh, you know, that it's, um, you know, I see what, what I, what the, the typical that I see is a kapha person who looks like a vata person. I just want to point that out there. There yeah. are vata people who become anorexic. There are pitta people who become anorexic, yes. and uh, and some of those. Uh, you know, it could be individuals in certain communities where mm. weight is a real is a really important factor, like a dance community. Mm. I see a lot of uh, of that coming. You know, vata pitta prakrutis becoming anorexic almost because of their profession or something yes. that they that they've chosen. I've seen that. Uh, yes, and just and to I've, clarify, there, sorry, John, um, yeah. is that I don't mean the vata constitution; it's a vata aggravation. So it's it's yeah, yes yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah yeah okay yeah exactly. Exactly. And, uh, and for those individuals, um, again, the preventative techniques we kind of already talked about challenging Mm -hmm. their assumptions about, uh, about their, uh, body dysmorphia or that mind over matter or, uh, but I, I, so for these cough individuals that now look like Vata, they, uh, I think that they really, uh, in terms of the, of treatment, they really need to look at their relationship with having energy. Right. Mm-hmm. This is the almost energy dysmorphia. Right. This yeah. sort of idea that energy having a utopian idea of energy. Um, but they also need to actually look at why they're tired. Right. Yes. Is there is there some pathology um, in that tiredness? Is there a supportive way? Um, again, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll use my, my wife as an example again, because, mm-hmm. you know, because the, uh, I think it's always so helpful to have anecdotal things yes. here is that is that for her, if she wakes up early in the morning, you know, uh, she is like, um, for her, that is a really helpful for her energy levels. Mm-hmm. You know, k- kapha getting up early is a Ayurvedic way of, uh, of improving energy. And mm-hmm. so one simple thing that we do in our, that we do in our household is that I, you know, because I'm Vata Pitta, I like a darker room mm-hmm. and I need a sort of darker room to sleep well. So as soon as I wake up, 
I open the blinds right. and I usually wake up before sunrise anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I open the blinds and then she has that nice sunlight coming in the room mm-hmm. and she wakes up, you know, an hour and a half early or two hours early. And that to her is energizing. Yes. Uh, another thing that's, that's helped for her is she's replaced uh, coffee with something that's more authentically stimulating to kapha mm-hmm. instead of just uh, stimulating the adrenals. And we all know that kapha tends to have adrenal fatigue. Or vata, sorry, vata has adrenal fatigue, right? Well, um, I would actually say, I, I, this is a, this is, oh. seems like a paradox, but let me go okay, through it this Sorry. Way. Okay. Is that vata people have overactive adrenals mm-hmm. and that, that are, it's almost like vata people have, their adrenals are too strong. Mm-hmm. And so they're constantly in a hyperactive mode and they can just live in that space forever, right? Yes. Whereas on the kapha side, what happens is is that their adrenals easily peter out, oh, right? If they mm-hmm. get a, if they get a hit of adrenaline, they're then they're tired for the rest of the day right. after that, right? That's right. So true. So, yes. And so it's like um, uh, uh, because kapha people have these weak adrenals that can't really keep them in a stimulated state. Mm. Um, they like to have coffee because it get, it stimulates their adrenals a little more, but that right. just makes their adrenals tired, yes. right? So what you need is a, 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 I always turn kapha from stimulating the adrenals to stimulating the circulatory system, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's why the hot baths, the jumping jacks, and the herbal formulas, uh, I think Tulsi, uh, and um, and a nice uh, cardiac stimulant like Trichitu, yeah. um, it would be a kind of base formula for that. Maybe even a little turmeric and some bitter in there is going to um, give you the vasodilation, opening up your blood vessels, mm-hmm. sti- the, the spiciness of Trichitu, which is just black pepper, ginger, and a spice called Pipoli. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you don't have Trichitu at home, just use black pepper or ginger. Right. It's going to stimulate the heart rate up. And then your turmeric is another uh, invigorate the blood. That's what turmeric does. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, at its core, turmeric invigorates the blood. It's a good phrase to associate with turmeric. And then, um, and then finally, uh, the bitterness uh, is a uh, liver stimulant and bile stimulant that uh, that just gets the um, uh, uh, that it, it just it'll, it'll, it's overall kapha pacifying and kind of moves some of the sluggishness out of the blood. And all together, that's that sort of brief formula. And you can do that with food. You don't need herbs. You know, you don't need right, to buy fancy right. stuff. Right, exactly. Food that has those properties that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get a simulation of the circulatory system, an authentic way to stimulate kapha. Yeah, love that. Great tips there. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, what I often come up against as well, John, is, you know, clients who have a fear of eating, of course, because either... For example, there's a fear of like, oh, if I eat a a big meal, I'll feel heavy and I won't be able to be my usual go-go self and be productive. Yeah. And then the other one on that that I'd like you to comment on is for, to say, for a pitta aggravation where they get sharp pains or cramps or, you know, some sort of inflammatory condition and there's a fear of eating there. So what would you say, I I put two out there for you, the vata who's fear of being too heavy and the pitta who's a fear of the pain. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so if a remember, we're talking about a kapha prakruti with a strong vata disorder here, right? Mm-hmm. And so their original thought that they should eat light, uh, lighter food in order to um, not uh, overwhelm, not to uh, aggravate their kapha. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. But that can't translate to severe calorie restriction. Yes. Right. That's the that. So that's the issue. Is that for a kapha person? They're not just going to go out and I mean, if they're having a if they're severely underweight, they may actually need to to do this. But they're not just going to, you know, say, okay, well, I'm not going to eat light anymore. I'm going to have Coca Cola and pizza, and Mm -hmm. you know, they're not just going to go and eat all this really calorie dense food. Now, Mm -hmm. again, if you have a strong, if you're anorex, if you're anorexic right now and you're in therapy, you know, you're you may need actually need to have. Um, you know, a very calorie rich food. And so mm-hmm. I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to the people who after they're out of therapy and after their nutritionist has told them um, that they are, uh, they, you know, they no longer need to just be so strict with, um, with refeeding. Right. So yes. this is post 
after you're done with anorexia, but you still have this, you know, this uh, kind of, um, you know, you're still working with some uh, of those impulses and mm -hmm. things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So your impulse to avoid very heavy sluggish food should be interpreted as don't eat refined sugar and refined flour mm -hmm. and, you know, heavy dairy products. Yeah. It should not be um, distorted to say I am uh, going to do calorie restricting, yes, right? Yeah. Um, and a kappa person can have uh, some uh, some cheese and ca you can even have some uh, refined sugar and some flour, but they just need to be a little more cautious with that. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing uh, and I'll, that I'll say to all of those ca those kaffas out there and especially the kaffas that are, um, you know, uh, if you are, you know, still real, if you're still underweight and uh, is that you can trust your body if you're eating whole foods. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and your body's appetite mechanisms and all of that. If you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you eat, uh, reasonably patiently or slowly, um, you're not just woofing down your food. Uh, if you're eating in a restful manner, you can trust your body with, with whole foods. You're never going to be, you may be 15 pounds more than what you think your ideal is, but you're never going to be like, 60 pounds overweight, or you're never going to be obese. You're never going to be pathologically um, overweight if you uh, if you're dealing with whole foods. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a real, you know, safe uh, safe area. And um, and then all the other stuff I said is just you know don't be don't be rejecting of your of your nature. Mm -hmm. uh, half the pe Vata people, you asked about Vata, so I do want to I do want to address that because if you have a serious Vata aggravation. You may not be able to eat whole wheat, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> because it's too heavy. Yes. So that and when you're in the early stages, it has to be easy to digest. You still mm -hmm. want nurturing. You don't want light food and light foods. You're not just eating salads all day, mm. but you want light uh, foods that are oh just building, that are nurturing, nourishing, but easy to uh, to digest. So yeah. yeah, nurturing, nourishing, oh just building, easy to digest. Great, great tips. And then if you're feeling that pitta pain after eating and there's a fear of that. Let's just remember that 80% of ulcers um, have uh, are associated with H. pylori. That's just a Western mm -hmm. medical fact. You could be like three days from that pain uh, being gone. Mm -hmm. And so if you have pain after eating, uh, that's uh, something I always refer to uh, get a stool, uh, a medical doctor, mm -hmm. and you're probably going to get some kind of stool test or H. pylori test or whatever if you have strong pain after eating. Uh, that would be, you know, I would I would definitely go to a medical doctor if you have pain after eating. Now, Ayurveda can, uh, has lots and lots of techniques to help you mm -hmm. with uh, pain after eating, and you should explore those as well. But if you actually have upper GI uh, pain after eating, um, you know, wh why suffer for a long time? Just go to a med medical doctor, get a good diagnosis. Western medicine is great for diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We don't need to, uh, throw away diagnosis. Even if we don't want to take a pharmaceutical, we can always get a diagnosis right. and then make a decision. And so, um, you know, but I, but I do think that, uh, uh, uh there's such a high incidence of H. pylori with, uh, associated with upper GI pain mm -hmm. that that's where I would go first. And then, you know, and then you can use all of those wonderful Ayurveda techniques. Once you've uh, gotten rid of the root cause, you can use all those wonderful Ayurveda techniques to for healing of uh, inflammation and itis uh, in the upper GI. Wonderful. Thank you for that. So I think, you know, all in all to summarize here is that Ayurveda can really help in understanding your mind body type and in mm -hmm. and it's a it's a real journey to yourself and i think that's what is important with eating disorders and body dysmorphia of course there can be a lot of root factors for these yeah. eating disorders and so on yeah. but the more we understand our true nature the more we uh, appreciate our true nature and go on this journey with ayurveda and understand how to live and eat and how to stay in balance for our body type the more we will have that that quality yeah. of life and that vitality um and and just a deeper understanding and curiosity and and, and knowing and i would say to anyone who has an eating disorder too Give yourself a treat and take our Mastering Ayurveda Digestion yes. and Nutrition course. I was I was going to ask you more about that because you mentioned it earlier. So tell us about this. It's so it's a Master's in Ayurvedic Digestion and Nutrition course. Yeah, well, uh, 
for people who have eating disorders or really anyone who's interested in Ayurvedic digestion and nutrition, you'll really get to um, explore uh, your relationship with food. And, um, and you know, I said in the beginning that anorexics, people with eating disorders are people who fundamentally believe that their relationship to food is their pathway to health. And, mm. and so if you, if that's true for you, like this course is going to, um, is going to just present, present that fully. It's going to give you a chance to delve into it for a whole year. Um, Ayurveda's nurturing, supportive, healthy relationship uh, with food. And it's something that you'll not only be able to do for yourself, but able to uh, see clients when you're done and, um, and start taking this inherent interest uh, that you have and making it a part of, of your life in this deep way and a part of what you offer to other people. And we have so many people who had eating disorders uh, in in our course, and uh, and they have learned just so much about their body through it, about their own digestion. Uh, I just think it's a great and exciting opportunity for anyone who you know who thinks they might have that an interest in that area. Right. Whether you're taking it personally for yourself or professionally, it does sound like a great course. So it's a year long, and it's online, obviously, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. It's a year long it's online. We meet three times a week uh, for uh, about an hour each uh, each time we meet. And then we do food experiments each week uh, where you're going to uh, learn how food affects you. Mm. You're going to learn uh, the almost the ph- herbal or pharmacological effects of, uh, of food on this such an intuitive level that um, that you'll be after by the time you're done, you'll have develop this skill where you could take eat foods that you've never eaten before and be able to talk about their medicinal effects just through personal experience your mm-hmm. ability to interpret uh, food as medicine mm. on this intuitive level I think is just one of the most exciting things that that uh, course offers Wow that sounds wonderful just such a great knowledge for each individual yeah, to get, have we get a lot of Ayurveda practitioners that take it, uh, it, it you know it's uh, that actually take the course just for that reason. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. That's such, such powerful knowledge to have. And so when is the course starting, John? It starts uh, in October. Uh, the I think it's the uh, first week in October, October 8th or 9th mm-hmm. uh, this year. So not too long from now, about a month from now. Great. And I believe you have a special offer for the listeners here. Oh, yes. Yes. If you have listened to this podcast and uh, and are interested or intrigued by what Ayurveda uh, can do for you, uh, and you want to register for the course, um, I'll give you seven hundred and fifty dollar wow. scholarship towards the course uh, just for listening today. Wow, fantastic! So I will put that link in the show notes, and you can also go over to my website elementshealingandwellbeing dot com and go to resources I recommend, and you'll get the link with that seven hundred and fifty dollar scholarship. John, that's very very generous of you. And also tell people where they can go to find out more information about the course. Oh, yeah. Go to joyfulbelly.com. And then on the top, you'll see in our top nav bar, you'll see some, uh, something to the effect of study Ayurveda. And mm-hmm. that's where our, our courses are. You can see our two courses that we offer, the two-year program uh, for uh, people who want to become Ayurveda health counselors. And then the one-year program, if you want to be really focused on digestion and nutrition. And, uh, and so both of those, uh, courses I think have a lot to offer and, um, and they're not overlapping. So some people take them both. Great. Great. Yes. Fantastic idea. Go from one into the other. So thank you so much, John. That offer is really generous. And thanks so much for coming on today and tackling this huge topic of eating disorders. And it was so kind of you to share your personal experience with yourself and your wife and and your journey with eating disorders as well. I truly appreciate it. I think it's going to help a lot of people out there. Yeah, well, um, I'm excited to to offer uh, whatever I can and to share with it. It is... uh, It is an exciting opportunity to be here on your podcast today. 
Thanks so much, John. It's great to chat with you again. And don't forget, everybody, I'll put all those links in the show notes. So head on over there and we'll get you your scholarship, $750 off for this Master's in Ayurvedic Digestion and Nutrition starting the first week in October. Great, John. Thanks a million. And take good care of yourself. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye now. Take care. What a generous offer there from John Immel at Joyful Belly. So to take advantage of that amazing $750 scholarship, click on the link in my show notes or just visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. Go to the page resources I recommend and you'll find the link there which will automatically give you that discount. If you think that this information that we covered today would be helpful to any family or friends, please share this information with them so that they can understand how Ayurveda can support them in their healing journey. And don't forget also about my upcoming Ayurveda and Yoga retreat happening in the south of France, October 11th to the 13th. And I would love to have you here and meet you in person. You can click on the link in the show notes for all the details or go to my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash retreat. Thanks for tuning in. Take good care of yourself. Be well and ciao for now. <music>